Hi there, this is Johnston. In this video, I'm going to teach you the basics of cohort analysis. First thing I want to do is define a cohort analysis. So, a cohort analysis is a type of analysis used to measure the behavior of different groups of entities. The most classic example of where a cohort analysis is used is in the measurement of user retention. So, you might be wondering, what do I mean by this word entities? Well, I define entities as something that's important to your business that you can count. It could be buildings, it could be deals, uh, it could be really anything. Uh, the most common example I can give you is users. And in my example, you'll see that I've used users. So now that we've defined cohort analysis, let's jump into an example. So imagine you're in a analyst at a company and the head of product comes to you and says are we improving our onboarding rate and the onboarding rate is defined as the percentage of users which complete the full onboarding process within 48 hours from sign up basically you know users fill out a form they join the, 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 the service or, or product and then they need to go through certain stages to be onboarded and take advantage of the service. It's very important for a business to know its onboarding rate and then be able to see um, if they can improve that onboarding rate. So let's expand on this idea a bit. So the question, as I said, is are we improving our onboarding rate? How do we answer this question? Well, we can answer this question by comparing the onboarding rate of recent users compared to older users. In other words, if we see that users which signed up recently have a higher onboarding rate, rate than users which signed up a month ago, then we know we have, we have improved our onboarding rate. So if we go back to our definition, we can see that it's a cohort analysis is a type of analysis used to measure the behavior of different groups of entities. In this case, we're talking about users. And that's exactly what we can do what we need to do over here. We want to compare the behavior of a certain group of users, older users, users which signed up a month ago, versus users which signed up recently. So in other words, we need to do a cohort analysis. So, oops, let's have a look at what an a cohort analysis would look, would look like. This is a very basic example cohort analysis. I'm going to give you the more advanced one uh, a bit later in the video. So a cohort is essentially a group of something, in this case you're talking about users, that fits in this individual row within our analysis. So when you talk about cohort analyses, we're talking about essentially tables. Um, so let's go through the columns and then I'll expand on, on this idea, on, on some of these concepts. So the first column is sign up week. So essentially the given week in which the users that appear in column B signed up in. Now this is important to understand is a user that's sitting over here can't be over here. So when it comes to cohort analyses, when we're taking um, whatever we're counting, it's users, deals, buildings, etc. They can only appear in one row in our table. It's fixed. You can only have one sign-up week. You can't appear in multiple sign-up weeks. That's very important. So column B is the number of users within our call, within each cohort. So a cohort is a given week. And then this section over here is essentially what we've built to help us determine um, the, the help us determine the conversion rate that we, we're interested in. So in this case, we're talking about completed onboarding and we have a yes or a no, okay? So once again, this is defined as completed onboarding within 48 hours. So it's locked, it's, it's, a, it's a, the conversion rate has a specific period that either it happened or it didn't. So if these users completed the onboarding with, you know, after 48 hours, you know, after 72 hours, they're going to still appear in the no column. So if we look over here in the first row, in the 
the 5th of April, in that given week, we have 776 users in that cohort, and out of them, 155 completed onboarding. So these two cells equal the cell, right? So we're taking the population, and then we're determining the conversion rate in absolute uh, terms. So here we're talking about absolute, we have absolute numbers. A better way to look at cohort analyses is in percentages. Okay, we still want to see the absolute because if these numbers were very, very low, then it's not going to help us. You know, we can have too much variance. But since we have hundreds of users in given cohorts, this is fine. And what I like to do um, when I'm doing cohort analyses is actually give some conditional formatting. Uh, you know, I'm using Google Sheets, pretty easy to do. And here we can see very, very clearly when we're going from older cohorts to newer cohorts, that something changed over here, where we went from 22, 20 to 22% completed onboarding with, within 48 hours, to whopping 67%. So now we can clearly answer the question, did we improve our, our onboarding rate? And the answer is yes. We can see very clearly that we more than three times, uh, more than triple our onboarding rate. Um, so cohort analysis is very, very powerful for taking a specific metric and then grouping our users within different cohorts to see if we are improving that metric over time. To do this properly though, you've got to obviously have enough users that you can divide up. You need to have enough time. So here, you know, just these are all made up numbers. I went back six weeks, but maybe the metric you're trying to, um, to measure, you need six months of history. And then you're going to have this big gap. You've got to wait all the way, you know, you've got to go all the way back to uh, periods which are six months old. There's a long lag time. Um, so this is what I would call a basic example of a cohort analysis of taking essentially a certain um, performance metric that's got either a yes or a no value and I can group my users and check did they meet the criteria to be in the yes column or the no column. But the more classic example of a cohort analysis is for attention. So Let's jump into this example. Once again, this is all made up, uh, made up data. So once again, we've got a certain period of time. This is the classic way to kind of group users by a certain time, time period where a user can only be within one uh, group or cohort. And then what we're going to do is we're going to measure their weekly retention. So uh, the one here basically means did the user return to the application one week after sign up? Right, so this could be considered week zero, where everyone obviously was in the app because they signed up. But this is after one week, after two weeks, after three weeks, after four weeks, after five weeks. And notice this shape, this diagonal, because these users over here are, haven't existed long enough to actually be included. In they haven't yet got three weeks. So with a retention call table like this, you're always going to have the shape because these users, for example, only have two weeks of history. Um, the first week, which is essentially over here, and one week after their first week. And once again, this is absolute. This is important to see so we can get a basic idea of how many users are falling into a given cell. But the better one would be is percentages. Um, because now percentages are, are normalizing. We don't really care as much how many users are in within, within each call. We want to look at performance. And we can just actually see here an interesting trend where we had, you know, week one retention, 86, 84, and then drop to 78, and then all the way back up to over to 90, and then over 91. And obviously, you know, condition, conditional formatting is very, very helpful in such a case. And now what we can do is we can look over time and we can see the trend for given cohorts. But more importantly is we want to look down and we want to see what our trends look like. There's not too much data in this table, so we might want to wait another few months to, to have enough data here. 
but we can start to see that you know we seem to be improving. We've got this outlier week for week one where it dropped to 78%, but then we're now at a new high of 91%, which is great. We'd want to see if this cohort performs better over time compared to older cohorts. For week two, we can see it went from 71, we went up to 74, which is great, and then it dropped down again. So this is kind of a, a weird trend. You probably wouldn't see this very often in, in the real world, but uh, basically we seem to be improving week one, but then we seem to be getting worse for week two. Week three, we only got three uh, cohorts worth of data. It's not too much to learn from that. But unfortunately, after five weeks, we're down to only 15% of our starting 100% uh, or, you know, in this case, 776 users. We're only left to 15% of them. Come back over here, that's 115 out of 776. So that's it. Uh, I'm going to link in the description below to some resources on, on the Project PR website that talks about cohorts. Um, I've got one article on different resources so you can learn this topic in more detail. And another post which I'll link to below as well, which shows you how to build cohorts in Excel and Tableau. Thanks for watching.